Happy Sabbath, Church! In behalf of the Philippine International Church pastoral staff and AUP Academy, we would like to welcome you all to this house of worship, to this Sabbath morning worship. Indeed, it's a bright and blessed Sabbath day, a day of rest and gladness, and a day to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? This Sabbath is the culmination of AUP Academy's Week of Prayer with the theme, Refresh Jesus, the Essence of Our Faith. During the week of March 19 up to today, it, 10 students of AUP Academy were the ones who led every morning and afternoon sessions of the worship service of the week of prayer during the week. Now to all our guests and visitors from churches and congregations all over the place, we would like to welcome you all. It is a joy to worship with you today. We would like also to ask each and every one of you to extend your hands and your maybe greetings to your brothers and sisters and say to each other, I love you in the love of the Lord. Truly, the God that we serve is the God of love. I love you in the love of the Lord. Thank you so much. Our potluck sponsor today for all our guests who would like to stay and spend Sabbath fellowship lunch, there will be a potluck at the Barangay Central at Apartment A Lawn. So I would like you to come over there and enjoy the fellowship led by the Barangay Centro at Apartment A Lawn. Next Sabbath, the potluck will be sponsored by Barangay Nayong Masaya. So come again, guests. And they are going to have also and sponsor the fellowship lunch on that Sabbath morning. At this point, I would like to call on the AUP Academy ARC advisors and sponsors and also Pastor Brian Tolentino to come up here because he will be receiving and he will be given a certificate of appreciation for gracing our culmination week of prayer session this morning as our speaker. For some of our announcements, Sabbath school teachers' lesson review is still, or lesson preview, is still going on every Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. at Mother's Room. Also, there will be a church board meeting this afternoon at 5.30 p.m. at Mother's Room. So make sure all the church board members are coming and will be joining the meeting this afternoon at 5.30 p.m. There we go. Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Pastor Edgar Bryan and Tolentino for his selfless dedication in serving the Lord as the guest speaker during the culmination 
of the Adventist University of the Philippines Academy's Week of Prayer with the theme, Refresh, Jesus, the Essence of Our Faith, held at the Philippine International Church, Adventist University of the Philippines, Puding Kahoy, Silang Cavite, given today on March 24, 2018, signed by the ARC President Jonas Ranas, SG President Adelbert Adelbert Diaz, AUPA Chaplain Pastor Joshua Castillo, and myself. Pastor, thank you for coming. At this point, we would like to call on Pastor Rex Mangiliman to present our candidates for baptism and also have a child dedication. Thank you very much, Sister Ardell. Uh, before we have the child dedication service, we will uh, be having the acceptance into church membership of our candidates for baptism. And I'd like to call on Sister Emmy to read to us the names of our candidates for baptism. These are coming from the Academy congregation. Okay, here are the following candidates for baptism today. Uh, Floyd Justin Arcelia, Ernesto Luis de Jos, James Abraham Galang, Diane G. Nozido, Rachel Aliza Valdez, and Rachel Ann Valdez. These six uh, young people will be baptized today, right after the service. And we have additional of two, Frizel Ann Arberacio, Kyle Lewell Arberacio. They will be baptized on April 7, 2017 by their grandfather, Pastor Abner Roque. May I call on our candidates for baptism to join us here so that our congregation can recognize you? or can see you before we approve the accept, your acceptance into church membership. And again, we will now be accepting them into church membership subject to their baptism. I move Pastor Mangaliman to accept these young people into church membership today subject to their baptism. Okay, so it has been moved, and uh, by the way, together with them are their teachers, uh, the AUPA pastor, the principal, and together with another faculty, uh, who will serve, I believe, who will serve as their spiritual guardians, and of course, their parents as well. And so it has been moved that we now accept them into church membership, subject to their baptism. There will be a baptism today and also on April 7. Uh, is there a second to that motion from our church members? Okay, I see a hand over there. All in favor that we now accept them into church membership, please raise your hand. Thank you very much. Opposed may do the same. So it's carried. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the PIC family. Also today, we will be having the child dedication service and there are, uh, we will be dedicating to the Lord two babies. And uh, Mom Emmy here will also read to us their names 
And as she reads their names, may I request the parents to bring their babies with them. Join us here at the pulpit. Okay, we have two children to be dedicated to the Lord today. A boy and a girl. First one is Shekinah Gail F. Gabo. Born on June 5, 2017 to Gary Avel M. Gabo and Shereel. Francisco Gabo. Ten, Rain Kyrie B. Galicia. Born on Ju July 18, 2017, to Bobby M. Galicia and Larry Bawika Galicia. Okay, this is a wonderful opportunity for all of us as members of this church to be a part of this child dedication service. And every quarter we have this service to dedicate our babies or children to the Lord. Now, why are we having child dedication service anyway? First of all, it is to follow the example of Mary and Joseph when they dedicated or brought to the temple Jesus when he was still a baby. Also, to Jesus himself, babies are so important. Our children are so important. In fact, when the disciples were forbidding the parents to bring their children to Jesus, he, in my uh, interpretation, he scolded the disciples and told them, don't prevent the children from coming to me. And so, to Jesus, children are so important. But one of the reasons, another reason, why we want to have children dedicated to the Lord, another, another reason is we wish, we pray, that they won't have a serious illness, right? Ayaw natin na magkasakit sila ng matindi. Especially now that uh, the issue on Deng Vaksha, is roaming around the country. Also, we want them to grow as good citizens of this country and good citizens of the world to come. Also, good members or good citizens of the church. But, let me tell you this, and this is for all of us too. If we are dreaming, wishing, that they will be good citizens of this world and the world to come. And we are hoping, or you are hoping, and those who will be having their children dedicated to the Lord in the future are hoping that whenever we have this activity, I'm going to come here and bring a magic wand so that I can just make a spell and say that they will grow as kind Obedient children, that's not going to happen. Child dedication service does not have a ma magic with it that comes with it. And just wish that our children will grow in accordance with God's will. Because it's not going to happen. A bigger portion of that is or depends on you, on us parents. 110%, if I may say. But of course coupled with God's guidance. And so, we are here because we want to have our children dedicated to the Lord, praying that they will grow in accordance with God's will, in the ways of the Lord. That's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Training is a big portion. That's why I'd like to say that this is not just a child dedication service, but this is a parent consecration service. We want to consecrate you so that God will empower you on how you can raise your children in the ways of the Lord. And so, we may say that we want our children to grow in the ways of the Lord, but you know what? This is easier said than done. Don't you think so? There was a psychologist, by the way. He wrote 10 ways on how to raise your children. So he got married and had children of himself. And then when uh, 
he had children, they asked him, are you going to revise your book? He said, yeah, I'm just going to write five ways on how to raise your children. And then he had more children. And then they asked him again, are you going to revise your book? Then he said, no, just raise your children. You know why? Ang dali-dali yung magkaroon na anak. Pero hindi ganun kadaling magpalaki ng anak. Some people are saying that uh, iba na mga bata ngayon. Do you agree on that? Do you agree that children today are different? Because I don't agree with that. What I believe is this. Iba na mga magulang ngayon. So, what do your children need? Number one, your children needs your children need love. Okay, Ellen White said in Desire of Ages, can we see that on the screen? As the mother teaches her children to obey her because they love her, she is teaching them the first lessons in the Christian life. The mother or the father's love represents to the child the love of Christ and the little ones who trust and obey their mother or father are learning to trust and obey the Savior. Okay? That's number one that they need. Your love. Number two, and this is so hard, discipline. You know why? Some parents, because they love, how can you discipline a baby like this that is so cuddly and so cute? Well, of course, that's not the time that we'll have to really do that. But as they grow older, that's the time that you apply the discipline that's needed. That's why, again, I said that I mentioned, I don't believe that children are different today. Parents are different today. But they really need our discipline, especially they, when they are running around inside the church and the parents are not doing anything about it. Okay? And the third one is they need your example. You know what? This is what I have learned. Children are photocopy machines. They copy everything that they see from us. The problem is that we parents, especially us dads, we are consistently inconsistent. And so with this, that's why I've said that this is a child dedication service and at the same time, parent consecration service. And may I call on Pastor Joshua Castillo to join me here as we now have this dedication service. And before we pray, may I ask you parents, will you now pledge, promise in, in front of the congregation here, church family, and in front of God, that you will do your best with the guidance of the Holy Spirit to raise these children in the ways of the Lord? For the congregation, we are a church family. Will you also promise that you will include them in your prayers and if there be an opportunity for you to help them lovingly, in lovingly telling them, giving them tips on how they can better raise their children, will you also promise that to our church members? Very well then, we will kneel here. You can pray with us on your seats while we will kneel here in the pulpit. Our dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for these babies, for these children that you have given to their parents. Lord, these children are not theirs, but they are mere stewards of your children. As your stewards, I pray, dear Lord, that you consecrate them at this moment. Give them the power the strength, the knowledge and wisdom that they need so that they can raise these children in your ways. So that they can, better be, get, they can be better citizens of this world and the world to come. I pray to the Lord that these parents may be able to give the needs of these children, the love, the discipline, and the example that these children need. I pray for these babies. I pray that they will not have serious illness. I pray that your holy angels will always be with them, keeping them safe. I pray that your Holy Spirit 
will give them the wisdom and the knowledge that they need, just as He has given it to our Lord Jesus Christ when He was growing up here on earth. And now as we raise our hands towards these babies, I pray that the Spirit might be poured upon them. I pray that you continue to bless them and their parents because we ask this in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, thank you very much and God bless you. We'll give now the time to Sister Ardell for the rest of the announcements. For our upcoming events in April 6 to 8, Central Luzon Conference-wide Care Group Prayer Festival will be held here at PIC. There will be a Friday Vesper meeting as the opening ceremony, and there will be sessions on that whole Saturday on April 7. At PIC, the worship will be in Tagalog or Filipino dialect. So we would like to announce and uh, let you know that that program will be held here on April 6 to 8. Now I would like to introduce to you our divine worship participants. We would like to thank our brothers and sisters who will be leading us in our worship this morning to be led by our musicians, Mr. G.J. or Brother G.J. Francisco Frias, Gabriel James Frias as our organist, and our choristers will be Adelbert Diaz, Camille Zabat, and Ralph Dioso. Our worship leader will be Pastor Joshua Castillo, and our thoughts on the Sabbath will be led by Ken Robert Lamparas. Nina Ashley Franche will be reading our scripture, and then the pastoral prayer will be led by Jonas Luis Ranas. For the musical offering and appeal song, AUP Academy will be singing and will be conducted by Mr. Cyril Punay. And for our thoughts on stewardship, it will be led by Sister Elizabeth Crusata, and the offering, offertory blessings will be led by Eliza Branson, our speaker, the man of God, who will break down the bread of life this morning, will be from Pastor Edgar Brian Tolentino, who is now serving as the Assistant Director to Ellen G. White Estate Branch in the Philippines, situated at IAS. May the Lord bless us today as we have our worship and let us refrain from unnecessary noise and movements. Let us focus ourselves and our attention in the presence of our Lord. Invite the Holy Spirit and His angels to sit with us as we worship Him today. Happy Sabbath.
throughout this week of prayer, AUP Academy, faculty, staff, and students have meditated upon the theme, Refresh Jesus, the Essence of Our Faith. We have indeed experienced a refreshing of our souls. We have been refreshed about the eternal truths, the important teachings and Bible doctrines that we Seventh-day Adventists have come to believe and have embraced with all our hearts. So this Sabbath, it is but fitting for us to come together with the UPIC congregation and worship Him in humility, accepting the truth, the fact that indeed, when we come to God in worship, we will find refreshments. We will find the spiritual refreshments for our lives. Our God said through the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 31, verse 25, For I have satiated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. May we all together once again find spiritual refreshments as we worship Him together with a contrite heart, with a humble spirit this Sabbath morning. God bless us all. I request the worshipers to please kneel. I will be reading to you in the works of President Edwards, volume 4, page 622, for our thoughts on Sabbath. It says, When Christ finished his work of creation, his first great act in world history, he rested on the seventh day. This rest signified completion and accomplishment. He did much the same at the end of his earthly ministry when he completed his second great act in history. On Friday afternoon, the sixth day of the week, Christ finished his redemptive mission on earth. His last words were, it is finished. Scripture emphasizes that when he, when he died, it was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. Following his death, he rested in a tomb, thus symbolizing that he had accomplished the redemption of the human race. The Lord calls upon his people to make the Sabbath a day of delight. How can they do this? Only as they follow the example of Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath, can they ever hope to experience, experience the real joy and satisfaction that God has given for them on this day.
Almighty Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us as your sons and daughters. And thank you for this holy Sabbath day for which we are going to be refreshed by your word. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit himself would dwell within us to give us more experience of your presence. Teach us, Heavenly Father, and humble our hearts together. In Christ's worthy name we pray. Amen. According to Psalms 101, verse 100, verse 1 and 2, Shout for the joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Our first song will be, Come, Christian, join to sing. I'm requesting everyone to please sing with us.
For our scripture reading, I will be reading from the New International Version. The verse would be John, 14, chap- John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Please kneel. Father, creator and sustainer of our lives, Lord, we recognize thy presence today. We recognize thy goodness and thy power for gathering us for another Sabbath day. Lord, as we have this Sabbath, please open our hearts and minds. Prepare it that it may be receptive for your word today, Lord. And Lord, for the persons who will not be able to join us in this fellowship that we have, May you please visit them, inspire them with their word too, and please forgive us from all our sins. In Christ let me pray. Amen. the plan of God unfolds. 
morning, PIC. Happy Sabbath. Can you hear me? Let us pray. Our most gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we look back to the time when you were here on this earth, when you have called the disciples to have a relationship with you, and now you're calling us back again to a wonderful relationship with you. We pray that the message that we're about to hear today will inspire us to continue our relationship with you until you come. In Christ's worthy name we pray. Amen. I'm very happy and privileged to speak here before you at PIC. I always cherish the time when I served here. And this is also a wonderful opportunity for me to serve not only the church, but also the academy students. This is now the culmination of their week of prayer. And the topic is refresh. Jesus, the essence of our faith. I was looking back at my own faith, seeing how God has been faithful to me from the very time I accepted him as my personal savior in 1998 until now. I am now privileged to serve as the assistant director for White Estate. And I'm very happy to see and refresh and be refreshed of the history of the church. Last year, Pastor Rex Mangiliman handed me over a stone or a rock. He said, Pastor Brian, maybe this could be added to your collection in the White Estate. I said, what is that? He said, somebody, you know, told me that he has particular rock that comes from a very historical place. And he said, he wants to donate it to you. And this rock actually came from, from William Miller Farm, the Ascension Rock. So I said, okay, I cannot authenticate, but I believe that the effort is worth because it took him or her, I don't know, for him to just give it to me. But I didn't know, little did I know, that in January, I would be sent by the general conference to speak to the wider state about sharing Ellen White to the millennials. And after that, a 10 days of historical you know, tour to historical places. And personally, Personally, I went to the William Miller farm and also took a stone. Almost the same material as the, as the rock that was given to me. It's very important because it's a very historical place. Let me just show you some of the slides that I went. This is the White Estate family, all the directors from different places, different divisions. So this is the front of William Miller house another slide, slide please so this is the william miller home the birthplace of adventism in america and it's one thing to read about william miller it's another thing to be there in such a place another um view please so this is the ascension rock behind it are the the, the maple trees according to the history william miller struggled whether he would be if he would share his 10 years of findings from the scriptures in the book of Daniel and Revelation about the second coming. So he was praying. He was struggling. He was trembling. And so William Miller said to himself, if somebody is going to invite me to share about this, I would go. But the moment he was invited, there was fear within himself. And so he struggled and went to the, 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 the maple trees and there he committed himself to sharing the Advent message. Now, across the world, there are about 20 million Seventh-day Adventists who heard the gospel. In fact, in that place, there's a chapel. Another sl slide, please. Another slide. Another slide. I think I missed the chapel. There's a chapel there. We call it the William Miller Chapel, where the original Adventist who survived, in the William Miller farm, there were about 2,000 of them in the world now. There are about 2,000 of them. 
And actually, they handed over this property to the Seventh-day Adventists because they believe that the Seventh-day Adventists can continue the message of the Second Coming until Jesus would come. Amen? Another rock that I brought was the rock that comes from, this is a stone that uh, comes from a place in New York where Hiram Edson's farm is there. It's a wonderful experience because Hiram Edson was the one who understood and explained to us why there was a great disappointment. The misinterpretation of the scriptures. But let me tell you, was it just a misinterpretation or there was something that can teach us of history about the experience that they had had? Yes, it was a misinterpretation, uh, but at the same time, there was a wonderful experience that happened to them in that place. And let me, te- let me give you some of the accounts of Ellen White during the time of the Great Disappointment, just to refresh us of what the Second Coming is all about. I'm not going to give you a, a sermon or a lecture on the Second Coming. I'm just going to tell you the reasons why we continue to believe and why we need to feel and experience the excitement of the second coming. According to Ellen White, she said, those, this is in um, Life Sketches of Ellen White, those who sincerely love Jesus can appreciate the feelings of those who watched with the most intense longing for the coming of their Savior. The point of expectation was nearing. The time when we hope to meet Him was close at hand. We approach this hour with a calm solemnity. The true believers rested in the sweet communion with God. An earnest of the peace that was in theirs in the bright hereafter. None who experience this hope and trust can, never, can ever forget those precious hours of waiting. And I envy the experience. How is it really to feel? Expecting that Jesus is going to come a day from now. Now, there are a lot of dilemmas now because many are time-setting, you know, go, doing some experiences or experimentations of the Jesus coming, you know, hysteria. But let me tell you, there is nothing so pure during those times that they really expected according to the prophecy that Jesus is coming, though they were mistaken, I think their experience with Jesus is never a mistake. Amen? The experience of looking forward the coming of Jesus as if He's coming hours from now cannot be compared. Cannot be compared. So what did they do? According to the account, she said, and I quote, Worldly business was for the most part laid aside for a few weeks. We carefully examined every thought and emotion of our hearts as if upon our deathbeds, as if they are dying already. They're recommitting their lives to Christ. And in few hours to close our eyes forever upon earthly scenes, there was no making of ascension robes as was published in the then newspapers that they were making, you know, ascension robes. She said, for the great event, we felt the need of eternal evidence that we are prepared to meet Christ. Internal evidence is most precious to them. It's not the making of robes. It's not the preparation, you know, outside, but the preparation inside. And she said, and our white robes are pure." Were, purify, were to purify our soul, character cleansing from sin, and by atoning blood of our Savior. Wow! What a wonderful experience. And if you can read all the accounts of all the Adventists that waited during the 1844 of October 22nd, it was so nice that they really feel and they were called seventh day they were called adventist or the millerite movement now the question today do we have 
the same feelings as Adventists today. Honestly, by the bustles and the busyness of life, and sometimes when we think about the future, we think about our children, we think about our career, we think about you know, our education, sometimes we set aside this truth that we have found so precious and the church still holds today. Yes, intellectually we know it, but yes, cognitively we know it, but honestly, if we ask ourselves, do we feel the same today? Do we feel the same today? Now, let me ask a question. What is the essence of the second coming to us today? I was listening to my friend, my best friend, Sagani Valencia, in the Facebook Live while he was preaching here. He was talking about the mission. We had a mission together two years in Lubao. We had this together. We have the passion going from one place to another for six months of hot desert of Pampanga. We were very hot. We wanted to share the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I was asking the same question, do I still have that passion today of sharing the coming of Christ? Do I still have the passion today of sharing the coming of Christ? Do I... Am I still an Adventist today by name only? Or do I still have the passion of that Seventh-day Adventism? So that's the question I want to leave you today. So what is the very purpose of our search for the Scriptures, especially of knowing the Second Coming? I'm not going to tell you texts from, you know, from the Crusades about Second Coming, but let me tell you about the real purpose. And I quote from Ellen White, Life Sketches 293, she said, you should search the scriptures for it tells you of Jesus. As you read the Bible, you will see the charmless, the, the, oh, sorry, you will see the matchless charms of Jesus. And I like this very much. Every time I open the Bible, these days I've been opening the Bible back to the basic. Especially now, in the Catholics' Holy Week, I've been opening again the crucifixion of Jesus, trying to find again this, another sense of the crucifixion of Jesus. I was looking for Jesus in the Scripture, not so much of theology, not so much of knowledge, but Jesus Himself. So Ellen White continues, she said, You will fall in love with a man of Calvary. And I was always look back to Revelation that says, you Ephesians, you're good, but you have left your first love. You know, there's a song that goes, first love huh? never dies. You have to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. The first time, you know, when I was a theology student here in the university, love songs does not appeal to my heart. And of course, I don't sing secular songs, including love songs. But when I met Lalaine during the Voice of Youth in Naga, of course, we went to Naga. I didn't know that she was there. I found him th her there. And of course, for some weeks, we were together. And finally, I felt something. And I told her before she left Naga, coming back here in AUP, I told her, you know what? I was praying for a lady. And would you mind if you also join me in praying for that lady? And she said, no problem. And who could that lady be? And, she said, and I said, and you happen to be that lady I was praying for. And what is your prayer? I said, I just want to fall in love with you. And from then on, I don't know what happened, but when she left 
Naga, because she was there for two months, when she left Naga to come here in university, I already had the intention of going to the parents and asking to court her. But let me tell you, since then, when she left Naga, all the love songs started to make sense. Except sana dalawa ang puso ko. All the love songs started to make sense. I don't know what happened. It was ridiculous. But let me tell you, every time I see people, you know, young people texting and texting and texting, during those times, texting is a new thing. I said, why do you keep on texting? Why do you keep on calling? But let me tell you, during those times, to call the lane would take you 300 pesos just for a day. Eight pesos per minute. But I did not care. I would buy the card, enter the registration of the card, and would talk to Lalane for hours. For hours. And when I came here, immediately, I went to the parents, and the parents said, Binata ka naman, dalaga naman siya, there is nothing wrong. And I said, yes. And of course, the moment came when I started to commit to her in the ministry. There in the music building, no music building yet. It was just what? Plain garden. My, my, my daughter is putting a keep silence there. I don't know if she means it. But let me tell you, I was engaged to Lalane. I didn't know that it would take so long because I was in the ministry. It took six years before she went to these aisles. And when we went together here, I was the youth pastor and wedded in a master guide ceremony. And I could not keep my chicks. It's, it's automatically going up no matter what I do. It's going up and going up. I could not resist it. And up until today, I rejoice that Lelaine chose me. And I would always ask her, why did, why did you love me? Why do you love me? She would always say, because you love me first. And I said, because I cannot resist on loving you. And until now, that first time I saw her, until now, it's, it's just getting better. But with my relationship with Christ, sometimes I would ask, why didn't, have, why didn't I have the same enthusiastic as I do? Is it because Christ has changed? Is it because the doctrine has not been, you know, every time I just open the Bible, I study theology, I'm now finishing my doctoral, I just open it and I just know, I read all the writings of Ellen White, but it's not the cognitive knowledge that I needed today. I wanted to feel. I wanted to feel the love that I had on the first day when I was baptized, when I was yet a sinner. Today, let me give you the sense of the second coming. The first sense for me is this. Let me just finish the, the quotation from Ellen White and then let's, let me give you three senses of the second coming. First, Ellen White said, The man of Calvary, and at every step you can say to the world, His ways are the ways of pleasantness, and all His paths are peace. You are to represent Christ to the world. You may show to the world that you have a hope big with immortality. You know, when I was baptized in 1998, I was Bible studied for three days. The only thing I know is Sabbath and food. And when I went to AUP, the first class I ever attended after my baptism was Christian beliefs with Pastor Bernardo. And because I was only Bible studied for three days, I could not even understand all the Bible studies except for the text in Exodus chapter 20. And about food, I didn't know everything. 
So when I was sitting on the class, I was listening to Pastor Bernardo. He was talking about the second coming without much gusto. It's just, it's just, just knowledge and text and all together and quizzes. But deep within my heart, it's like exploding. And then another class, Daniel and Revelation with Pastor Durante. I was very excited. The, all the class was just looking there. But when I was looking and reading the scriptures, denominational history with Pastor Pasikatan. It was and he was explaining the denomination of the church. I was so excited. My favorite subject is history. I was looking at this, looking at the second coming. I was so excited. And then I went for the first voice of youth I ever had. And the, the speaker was an accountant, accountancy student. And I was explaining Daniel of Revelation and second coming for the first time I attended crusade. I was so excited. I said, why can't we just preach this all throughout the world? I'm so excited. The Seventh-day Advent is born. Seventh-day Advent is just like that. And many of them, their motto is, Alam ko na yan. But you know, after a while, I even myself lost this gusto. And I also have this motto, Alam ko na yan. So oftentimes, I would kneel down. And the best place I would ever kneel is the place in the tennis court before going to Lolo's house, my house here, I would kneel down in that blocks. Naka block pa yan dati. There are blocks there. I would kneel down to one of those blocks. And oftentimes, because it's dark, people would pass by and I wouldn't care because that's my place with Christ. Amen. Those were the innocent days of my college. But let me tell you, those were the sweetest days. And oftentimes when you're busy with your children, you're busy with your work, and you're busy with evangelism, and you're busy as a search pastor, you're busy in research and all of this, you forget about all those feelings. But again and again, you would look back to the first love never dies. What is now the essence of the second coming? First, the essence of the second coming, point number one, is real relationship. What is the first essence of the second coming? Real Relationship. Amen? Real relationship. According to Hosea chapter 2, verse 19, and let me read it to you. Jesus said, and he's speaking to us, his church, I will bind you to me forever with the chains of righteousness and justice and love and mercy. I like it. The chains of righteousness, love, justice, and mercy. He binds us to Him. And this is our chains. When you are in the Philippines, when you get married, usually have the, they have these chains that binds you together. They have these chains that binds you together. And He's telling that you are bind with chains of righteousness, justice, love, and mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness and love and you will really know me then as you never have before. And when God betroths you to Himself, He will never change His commitment. He will never change His commitment. Never. By the grace of God, there was not a second in my life that I have thought of leaving Lalaine except for one time, first year of our relationship. When there was a circumstance that came to our relationship, I don't know what happened. I was so angry that I, what? I did something to her that, you know, scared her. Of course, I, I did not hurt her physically. But I was hurting her emotionally. And then I left. And when I left the home, I was determined. And I said to myself, Akala mo kung sino ka nap, napakaraming babae dyan. But while I was walking down the aisles there, walking, going to the, the university from their house, 
you know, a voice came at the side of my ear saying, I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live, Jesus Christ now live in me. Like Jesus was telling me, you know, I was faithful to you, couldn't you just be faithful to your sweetheart? I was, I was astounded and now I'm looking back towards Christ's faithfulness to His church when He said, I will marry you, I will marry you. You don't need to doubt. Sometimes we doubt our salvation. Sometimes we doubt, uh, did I do wrong or did I do right? And sometimes we base our relationship on ourselves and we don't base our relationship on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ to us. Though we are not faithful, He's still being faithful and because He is faithful, we can choose to be faithful. Amen? And faithfulness is the key to real relationship. Amen? Communication builds trust. And trust builds commitment. And commitment builds marriage. Amen? So I would say those who are having sweethearts today, you know, the day after we committed ourselves as sweethearts, Pastor Parulan, our senior pastor, said, can you come over to our office? I don't know what is going to happen, but he just heard that we are both of us. I was the AY leader. She was the music coordinator of the church. And then Pastor Parulan said, I have something to tell you. And one thing I could not, you know, forget of what he said. Be faithful. And not only faithful to each other, faithful to God. And I'm going to tell this in Tagalog. He said, Mas maganda ang relasyong Maria Clara. Mas maganda daw ang relasyong Maria Clara. And of course, I don't want to read it. But I, I don't want to ask pastor what does it mean but until now it retains in my mind i could not even interpret it until now i know we were not perfect but let me tell you god has been so faithful in keeping our relationship together if he is faithful in keeping our relationship together he is even more faithful in keeping his relationship to the church and to every individual that hopes that he's going to come the next time amen now, what is the reason why he's coming for the next time? Because of real relationship. Number two. Before we go to number two, yes, the Lord is faithful, but let me tell you, Psalm chapter 63 is how David expresses his relationship with God. Read it with me, please. In Psalm chapter 63, verse 1 to 6, O oh God, Thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul is thirsting for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in the dry and thirsty land where there's no water. You know, I'm not very faithful. Sometimes I would sleep without praying. Amen? Do you do that also? And sometimes, you know, because we are Seventh-day Adventists, we are a judgment-thinking people. Sometimes we just pray out of fear because we don't want that Christ would come while we are, you know, sleeping and we have not asked any, any of forgiveness. So maybe when we wake up, we would not be saved as if salvation is based upon ourselves and not upon God, His faithfulness to us. But let me tell you, Many times, God would wake me up. Many times, God would wake me up. And when I wake up, I begin to thirst. Sometimes 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. I would thirst for God. And I would look for the Bible. And when I would look for the Bible, I would always have the idea, which will I open from the Bible? I have already read all of them many, many times. But the Lord will let you open the scripture that will touch your heart so that your thirst will be quenched by God Himself. Amen? And when I am quenched, I am ready to serve and minister to others. This for me is a real relationship. And the relationship is what? The will is in God's hand. Sometimes we think, you know, 
you have to be very diligent, you have to be very honest and all of this. But let me tell you, I'm not that honest. I'm not that very diligent, but God is diligent. He would wake me up at the most uncomfortable time and wake my mind so that I could not sleep until I would be satisfied in my soul with Him. Amen? Second point. Number two. What does it mean by second coming? For me, second coming means engagement. Engagement. It's not just being engaged, but what are you engaged to? Or what are you engaged with? What are you engaging while you know, waiting for the coming of Christ? Are you just waiting there doing nothing? Or are you engaged in the work of God? Many Seventh-day Adventists are just waiting for the coming of the Lord. One time, I had an appointment with my, wife, with my sweetheart. And I said, let's, let's have a date and see you in Balibago. And she was there waiting and waiting and waiting. And she came back to the university. And we met together. And I was very happy. She was very sad. And I said, what's wrong? She said, didn't you remember? Remember what? We had an appointment. What appointment? Oh, no. <laughs> yes, we had an appointment. But you know, my wife, I really love my wife. She's not exaggerated. She says, you know, that's why I don't really trust you. For me, you know, sometimes if you think about, if, if your wife or your sweetheart would say, I, I don't really trust you, I would qualify. I said, what do you mean by trust? I don't trust you. You don't remember appointments. You don't remember things. Why would I trust you? Well, sometimes my, my children would be expecting and I would be fetching them and getting them from the school going, but sometimes I would miss it. And they would be, you know, just last night, they were, they were anticipating that I would come maybe at 8.30 and drink the, the, the strawberry, you know, shake. But 10.30, I came. And then, Lalaine said, you should have called us. But of course, there was no cell phone to call them. I said, you should have called us so that they would not expect anymore because they were expecting that you would come. You know, sometimes we are not faithful, but let me tell you, Christ is faithful. And according to Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3, yes, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. And though it tarry, and though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. You know? Why my wife is not bored whenever she waits for me? Because she's waiting, doing something. When she's waiting, she's doing the laundry, she's doing this. And when I miss the appointment, she's not worried because she's busy. Amen? Sometimes many Seventh-day Adventists will just wait. And because they waited so long, they could no longer wait anymore they do another business away from God's business. And let me read to you the experience of Ellen White during the Great Disappointment. Immediately in December of 1844, there was a vision that was given to Ellen White, a call to encourage the remnants. She said, on that December vision, I seem to be surrounded with light and to be rising higher and higher from the earth, I turned to look for the Advent people in the world, but could not find them. When the voice said to me, look again and look a little higher. At this I raised my eyes and saw the straight and narrow path cast up high above the, the path, or up above the world. On this path, the Advent people were traveling to the city which was at the farther end of the path. They had the bright light. At the back of them, the bright light called the midnight cry, the second advent message. If they kept their eyes, but at the
front of them, Jesus Christ is right there. So two lights are guiding them. Light of the second coming and the light of the second coming. Two lights. The second coming light to guide them. Twelve second coming of Jesus Christ to guide them so that they would not run astray or be tired. When you look at Jesus Christ, you will not get tired. And then she continued. But soon some grew weary and said the city was a great way off and they expected to have entered it before. You know why we grow weary? And I, some, I went to Davao and there was time setting there and I was, you know, explaining to them about what Ellen White said about time setting and it's very detrimental to our soul. And this is exciting our soul, but after the excitement, after we lose the excitement, we lose sight of Jesus Christ and we are more focused on the crisis, on the event, rather than on the person of Jesus Christ. And then, then Jesus would encourage them by raising His glorious right arm and from His arm came the light which waved over the Advent band. Let me tell you today, again, Jesus Christ is raising His hand to tell you that the light is still shining. We don't need to be worried or weary. Amen? Jesus is coming, and though He tarries, He will surely come, according to Habakkuk. Though He tarries, He will surely come, because it will surely come, it will not tarry that long. And sometimes when people ask me, how many years, Pastor, how many years? Years become months. Months become weeks. And weeks become days when we are with Christ. Amen? It's not that long. Number three, what does it mean by second coming? First is, is a real relationship. Second, is an engagement. Okay? You are meant, you mean to be engaged in the work. You don't just wait there doing nothing. Number three, what does it mean by the second coming? Number three is Mary age. Mary age. In Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the ten virgins. You know, Jesus Christ is telling this parable so that we can understand that the groom is so excited to come. The groom is so excited to come. But there are lots of business that needs to be done before the second coming of Christ. Amen? And so sometimes it would tarry, but it would tarry just to test the patience of His people. Pastor, you told me that it's not about us. It's about Christ. But when it tarries, of course, we struggle because the hardest work to do in being an Adventist is to wait. So it depends upon our, our patience. But let me tell you, patience is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And patience is needed to be asked along with love. Love is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, but there's a fruit of love. What are the fruits of love? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, the fruit of love is what? More than words, more than knowledge, more than sacrifice, more than just character, more, just, more than just waiting. It is the completion of the character of Christ in us. And if there is no waiting, the character of Christ would not be developed within us. Amen? So that when we waited for something and it would come, it's a merry age. Amen? It's a merry age. So when the bridegroom would see the groom coming, it's worth the wait. Amen? So let me tell you with your relationship, don't rush to marriage. Bear 
the fruits of patience and character of Christ. Amen? Bear the fruits of patience and character of Christ. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Many are waiting for Christ, but are not prepared for Christ's return. Why? Because they don't have a pure heart. Let me tell you, even if Christ has not come, if you have a pure heart, you can still see Him today. Amen? Even if Christ has not come yet, personally, if you have a pure heart, you can see Him today as if He is just there with you. And you don't go ahead of Christ. Why? When you, don't, when you go ahead of Christ, Satan is there to meet you and Christ is not there to help you. So don't go ahead of Him. Amen? And in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 to 23, of course, people will say, Lord, Lord, but let me tell you, the Bible says, and Jesus said, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What does it mean? But I never knew you. There was no relationship that was established between us. Second coming doesn't have any sense for those who does not have any relationship with Christ. In both sides, first. Second coming for Christ for Christ, when He comes and He sees you and He does not know you, is not an exciting moment. Amen? Why? Because He does not know you. He is coming for those who has waited for Him. Amen? And if you have not been waiting for Him, there is nothing to rejoice about. Amen? There's nothing to rejoice about. But for me, when Jesus is coming and you have established relationship, you have an engagement in the mission of Christ, then second coming is a merry age. Amen? It's a merry age. Isaiah chapter 25 verse 9, and I like this so much. Especially I was the Iglesia Ni Cristo. I thought that Jesus Christ is not a God. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, and we have waited for Him. And who are we waiting for? Christ. And if we are waiting for Christ, and Christ is coming, and He is not God, who are we talking to here? He said He is our God, and we have waited for Him, and He will save us. This is our Lord, and we have waited for Him, and we will be glad and rejoice in His salvation. Amen? Today, Second coming, if it's in the sense of merry age or marriage with Him. Jesus is so much excited. You know, six years was a lot. I was 26 years old. I was willing to be married to Lelaine. Just 10 years after, she said to me, You know what? I married you because I was thinking that you would be offended if I would not marry you at that. I said, Really? I was a little bit worried to, you know, not to marry you fast because you're already 32 years old and I was, I was worried that you would be worried and said, no. But let me tell you, when we got married and we had these children, I finally understand how is it to have a relationship soon. The closest relationship with Christ. Let me tell you, the enjoyment you have with Christ today is nothing in comparison when you would be with Christ forever. Amen? Sometimes Christ would wake me up in the morning and I would be singing a song and I would be crying just singing a song and I would feel His love. I could not actually feel my love for Him. But I feel His love for me. And I would cry because despite of my unfaithfulness, He's still faithful. Amen? How much more if we would see Christ, the Lamb of God, coming from the clouds of heaven in that great banquet. So what do we do now, now that we have the essence of Christ coming? Let me tell you. What do we do while we wait? Two texts remaining. Fight for your love. I've been seeing a lot of, you know, a lot of telenovelas now. And they're fighting for their love. And their love is just for human beings. But what about our love for Christ? In Matthew chapter 10, verse 38 and 37 says, Two more texts. He that loveth the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter 
more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Today, Jesus Christ is courting us again. If we have forgotten our commitment to him, Jesus Christ wants to tell us, please love me more than them. Peter was asked by Jesus Christ when he was, you know, rejected, denied three times. Peter was asked by Jesus Christ after he gave him fish to eat and bread. And Jesus Christ was asking, do you love me more than this? Brothers and sisters, I ask you the question three times. Do you love me? Do you love Christ more than this? And what is more than this? More than your course? More than your wife? More than your, your future? More than yourself? Christ is bidding us today to love Him more than anything else. And what is, what is for us if we love Him more than this? Luke chapter 18, verse 28 to 30 says, Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Peter said, We have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left his house, parents, brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God, for God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come in the life everlasting. Today, let me give you a context of John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. And let me open to you the scripture. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Reading from the context. This is in 13, the last verse. Listen very carefully, and I'm excited to, to share this. He said, Jesus answered him. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. And Jesus answered him, Will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow, crow till you have denied me three times. And immediately after he said the denial of Peter, he said, but let not your heart be troubled. Amen. I know you will deny me three times. I know you will deny me three times. But let not your heart be troubled. I still prepared a place for you. Amen. You love that? You love that? The second coming is not about us or not what we can do for Christ. Yes, we can do something for Christ, but let me tell you, Christ can do more things for us. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Even if you deny me three times, you believe in God, just believe in me. Believe also in me and believe in God. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I'll go to prepare a place for you. And after I go to prepare a place for you, I will go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and marry you. Amen. And fulfill my commitment, my relationship with you. It's my relationship to you will love me because I first love you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today let us ask that the love of God will continue to manifest in our lives so that we can continue to love Him more and more. And where I go, there you may be also. I'd like to call our choir today. I'd like to call for recommitment today. Yes, we are Seventh-day Adventists. Yes, we have accepted Christ. In crusades, we respond to Him. But today, let us refresh ourselves with our commitment to Him. Amen? While the choir is singing, I'd like to appeal that those who have been touched by the Holy Spirit to recommit their lives in a, a constant relationship with Christ until He comes, would you like to come? Would you like to recommit your life again here some of those who have not committed their lives in baptism would come. And some of those who have already committed their lives in baptism before, but have felt that the Holy Spirit is calling them again to recommit their lives in relationship with Christ, I would like to ask you to come. Come and be committed again to Christ. Come and submit again yourself so that you can feel again the love that comes from Him. It's not our response. It is love, but we respond to that love appropriately. And after that, I'll be praying for you.
Do you feel the Holy Spirit calling you today again to recommit yourself to Him, to engage in relationship again with Him? If you feel, feel that power, step aside and come and commit your life again to Him today. Come. Come home. Christ is calling you to come. Just come, plainly come. And the Lord will bless you with a wonderful relationship as you commit yourself to again to Christ today. Come. Come. Praise God. Praise God. Come. 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 You who are weary, come. Commit yourself again to Christ. The Lord is faithful to you. The Lord will be faithful to you. Praise God. Praise God. Come. 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 If you want to commit yourself again to Christ, come. Come. There's not, a, there's not a special day for you to commit, but today is an opportunity to commit. God can make something new with your relationship to Him again today. Praise God. Praise God. Shall we all kneel here? And would you pray for us as well? Gracious Father, again and again every day, you call us back to your side to commit our lives to you, to have a lasting relationship with you. Though we are not that faithful, you are faithful to us. You continue, Heavenly Father, to call us, to forgive us. You bind us, Heavenly Father, with your righteousness, with justice and mercy and love. And today we feel the call of recommitting our lives to you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have such forgiveness. You have such a character that would draw us more and more closer to you every day. Today, we want to have to establish that relationship so that we could be excited to think about your second coming and never to be weary, never to be worried, never, Heavenly Father, to be run astray by the conflicts of this life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have called us back again to become a real Seventh-day Adventist waiting for thy soon return with love and with in, that is willing to be engaged in your work. Help us, Heavenly Father, that we would value the day when you, are, you will come because you are the reason why we are living and why we are working. Bless, Heavenly Father, these young people, bless the couples, bless those who recommit, and bless those who are sitting, who are also recommitted their lives to you. And bless the academy students, bless the university students. Bless all of us, Heavenly Father, as we continue to wait for their soon return. Give us, Heavenly Father, the excitement. Return to us, Heavenly Father, the love that we have felt the first day we have committed our lives to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for such a privilege of coming to you again. Bless us mightily. Heal us, Heavenly Father, with our wounds. All of this we ask in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. For our thoughts on stewardship, let me share to you the story of Jordi from Ecuador. Jordi's family has suffered much, but 12-year-old Jordi feels blessed. His mother has a painful disease and can't walk, and his father lost his job because taking care of his wife takes much of his time. When we can see how we'll manage, we give our worries to God and let Him handle things. I know He won't forget us, He says. Jordi doesn't like to dwell on his family's problems. He wants to talk about how God has blessed them. When a pastor asked him to preach in church, he wasn't sure he could do it. 
but he prayed and God blessed him. It changed my life, he says. Now, Jordi loves to tell others what God can do in their lives. I want everyone to know that God loves them and has a plan for their lives. I tell them that they are God's children. They just don't know it yet. Jordi has dedicated his life to God, and he invites us to do the same. Brethren, when we allow God to control our lives completely, giving to his cost becomes a joy. Let us pray that God will give us the spirit of trust and joy that Jordi has. And may he bless those who will benefit from today's offering. The deacons and deaconesses are ready to serve.
dear Father, our child in heaven. We want to thank you for all the blessings that you have given to us. And we want to thank you, dear Father. We can return what you have given to us. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much. Father, give us willing, happy hearts. And help us, Father, to realize the eminence of your coming and to become true Adventists. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayers. Thank you for being our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing our theme song, Jesus is all the world to me, first and last stanza only. Jesus Christ, our friend. Help us, Heavenly Father. Help us, Lord, to fix our eyes upon you while we wait for you. Establish our relationship, Heavenly Father, with your faithfulness and your love to us. Help us to be faithful also to you. Dismiss us, Lord, here with the joy of your salvation, awaiting for thy soon return with gladness. In Christ's worthy name we pray. Amen.